Hey guys, so today I would like to talk about some basic security add-ons available for the Firefox and Chromium-based browsers. I also have a few channel announcements, but I will do them at the end of this particular video. Okay, so there are quite a lot of security add-ons, extensions, whatever you want to call them, out there for all the various different browsers, all of them claiming to, you know, keep you know keep you anonymous keep you protected keep you know stop you from having man in the middle attacks and all that kind of stuff and it can get a little bit confusing even for more advanced users uh, because often whenever I, I look for a security add-on for a browser or anything that well any kind of add-on for my browser I check to see if the source code is available because obviously I'm going to opt for open source solutions wherever I can and I often check to see how often it's maintained if you're going to get a piece of software to actually make your system more secure, you want to make sure that you get something as up-to-date and as regularly maintained as possible. And the more I do this, the more and more projects I find which have been abandoned several years ago and aren't really still maintained and, and as thus are probably more of a security liability than they are to tighten up any holes. There are also a lot of companies out there that you kind of have to trust as well. Uh, this not just this not only goes for closed source solutions. There was, of course, the or there still is this issue with the ghostry privacy add-on. I'll put a link to it down in the description. I'll let you read and sort of check out the add-on for yourself, but I don't recommend it because they make some of their profits out of it by actually selling your data so and data collected by that add-on so it in a way kind of defeats the objective yes they say that they anonymize it and all, and all that kind of stuff i don't know it doesn't seem to be necessarily the neither the most ideal or logical solution to the problem of security online it's probably if we're completely honest a step in the right direction but you're really again bringing this element of trust into your security setup and that's something you don't want to do security is about not having to trust that's the thing it's about keeping yourself secure regardless of the actions of other people at least that's how i sort of interpret uh, digital security it's making sure that you're protected and that you're effectively independence there's a lot of independence when it comes to and uh, you know the values of independence the sort of principle of independence because when you're independent you can look after yourself. So obviously, you know, security in its wider capacity often means questioning whether or not we need to use things like the cloud and how much information should, should be stored on whatever servers and all that kind of stuff. So it all gets in pretty deep and pretty complicated at that level. So I'm going to just run through a few uh, add-ons which are available for Firefox and Chromium-based browsers, which I think are basically the, the sort of 101 add-ons you want to get. Add-ons you want to get for for just covering the core bases of security. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of others, others which go a little step further, but uh, in due course. Okay, so the first one that I want you to install, and I do want you to install this one, because it is absolutely fantastic. It's called HTTPS Everywhere, and it's developed by the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. These are good guys. They've done a lot for the open source community over the years. I'm sure most of you, or at least a decent number of you, know who they are and what they're all about. If not, it's worth check looking them up on, online. You've, you know, you've got, a, you've got a computer there, presumably. You know. So anyway... This is a great piece of software for a number of reasons. It chiefly makes sure that whenever and wherever possible, information sent from your computer to another computer and from another computer to your computer is encrypted with end-to-end -end solid HTTPS encryption. It, this should be pretty standard across the huge majority of websites that exchange any kind of data and, and for all intents and purposes, any website worth its salt does. But this uh, add-on effectively makes sure, and I like this add-on because it stays out of the way. Um, there is a contingency, there is contingency documentation in case a website isn't exactly viewable the way that you want, or you can't access a website the way that you want because um, HTTPS is for some reason in the way. You know, there's documentation you can read to get around that, but I have never once had a single problem with that add-on. Um, but it does make sure that you communicate securely whenever possible, and it's one thing that you can just set and forget. It's very often, you know, one of those things where you can forget to install it on a new browser or on a new machine, but it is a pretty nifty essential. I'll link to the web, um, the web page explaining sort of more about the software and, of course, the software itself. And this goes for anything that I mentioned here today. 
Okay, so the next one, and this is uh, a slightly further step into the world of browsing more securely, is Privacy Badger. Okay, so as I understand it, Privacy Badger works heuristically, which means that it looks at your web traffic, it looks at the web pages that you are surfing, it analyzes the information going between you and the website that you are visiting, and it stops any third parties from taking your information. It just makes sure that the communication between you and the website slash person that you're communicating with effectively stays that way and that third parties stay out. Now, as I understand it, they are attempting to sort of expand that into um you know even more privacy and uh, and and to make it even more secure but it is at the time of recording this i want to say a work in progress but it's a it's, it's significantly further down the line than a work in progress it's a finished work with strong aims of improvement Okay, so there are two more add-ons which I want to finish off this list with, but I've left them to the end because they're a little bit more complicated. First off is no script, and then the second one I'm going to talk about is script block. They both effectively do the same thing, but no script works with Firefox and script block works with Chromium-based browsers. So no script is probably the most secure bit of software you can put onto a Firefox browser. There is a reason they include it in the Tor bundle, because the vast majority of information collection software is done through JavaScript. So, basically what NoScript does is that it blocks all JavaScript from running on any page that you're visiting unless you explicitly whitelist that specific JavaScript process. Now, that might sound like it's a bit of a chore, and some people say that it is, which is why it's not used by, well, it's not used universally. But a lot of people swear by it, because JavaScript is just such a comprehensive um, scripting language that, that it can collect just about any data that you can imagine. And no script is that ultimate iron wall that can separate you from harm. Now... It will impede your uh, surfing experience, so again, that's something to take into account. It is going to um, take a little bit longer to build up your whitelist, um, but it does leave you in full control. So for the most paranoid among you, I guess, no script is, uh, is pretty much a must, really. So how does this come across to script block? Well, script block is the Chromium kind of equivalent. Uh, script block stops a website from executing any kind of JavaScript, but you can give it the green light, but it lets it run all JavaScript on that page. So you'll want it to work in conjunction with something like Privacy Badger, so that third-party stuff is still blocked, even though you've given it the red light, the green light rather. It's a lot more simple and easy to use, and it effectively does the same thing. It does impede your experience, but it's also a lot quicker to whitelist websites. So again, it's more of a simple version of no script. I'm sure many of you are also quite keen to recommend, uh, is it called U-Matrix, which is another uh, add-on available, I believe, for both Firefox and Chromium-based browsers, which is a significantly more comprehensive version of um, script block, and I think no script as well. Like, it's um, you can allow and um, blacklist just about any element of a website uh, using uh, U-Matrix, but I've never personally felt... Um, that that kind of software is something that would improve my experience. So I've never really looked into it. But to those of you that have, feel free to let me know your experiences down in the comments section below. We're stronger when we think together. Let's not forget that. So that's about it in regards to uh, add-ons to improve your browser's security. I apologize for being a little bit rambly, but this is a tech tech vlog you know there you go that's that's kind of these things. That's the way with this channel, isn't it? So channel announcements. Um, as you guys know, I've recently hit 10,000 subscribers and, and I'm sort of taking some time to take stock of that and what that really means. Um, and um, basically what it means to me is it, it, it makes me want to double down on everything that I'm doing on YouTube. I really enjoy getting enthusiastic about open source software. I really enjoy getting enthusiastic about desktop environments and, you know, all this choice that we have in the free software world. And there is so much choice that... Um, that, that I'd like to find something that I like and share it with you guys, you know, as a effectively some kind of curator, maybe. So I want to do more work in 2016. I want to do a lot more videos, and I want to do, you know, I want to engage with you guys a lot more. So 
So I'm really going to make 2016 a solid year for, vi for, for you know, this YouTube stuff that I'm doing. It doesn't just go for this channel. It goes for the Fun With Flag channel, uh, and it goes for, for my personal vlogging channel as well. And I'll put links to all those down in the description, because to practice for, I mean, the best 2016 that I can bring out, I'm going to be vlogging every single day in December. It's called Vlogmas Among My Friends. It's a bit of a tradition. And uh, basically, I'm using it as a way to get into the rhythm of a, you know, a video creation workflow. So the longer I leave it in between making videos, the sort of the more stuff that you have to relearn. Sometimes there's a new version of Caden Live or whatever that comes out that I've got to, you know, get working. Or, or um, sometimes I, I even have to put on, you know, I have to work with a, a new distro. Um, but... Um, I'm going to take some precautions, I'm going to get some practice, I'm going to work things out, and I'm going to try and let those things be the smallest of problems. Um, well, I'm actually going to try and get rid of them as problems in time for 2016, and Vlogmas is a pretty good dry run for that kind of thing. So I'm basically intending to vlog every single day of this uh, December so that I can get a decent workflow down for a solid 2016. Um, this just includes things like making sure that the programs that I'm using I'm comfortable with and work and are stable and all that kind of stuff. So um, at least once a day on either this channel, my personal channel, which I'll of course link to in the description, and Fun With Flags, I'm going to try and put out one video on one of those channels a day and um it's going to be as good a quality as i can uh, as i can make it but uh that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now